Hi guys, this video is all about how I edit my novels. I'm going to talk about how I edit my novel for myself, how I edit for my beta readers, how I edit for my editor, and then finally for my audience. Now keep in mind, this is how I personally edit, which means that it may not completely work for you. After I walk you through each step of how I edit, I will also explain why I do that step so that you can determine if it's going to work for you. Make sure to stay tuned at the end for a couple bonus tips that I learned the hard way. There are basically three types of editing in the writing world. There's developmental editing, which is basically big picture. These kind of edits are when you look for plot holes or you want to add subplot. Maybe you're fleshing the story out in more detail, possibly removing unnecessary detail. You get the idea. After developmental edits are line edits. Line edits are exactly what they sound like. You go through line by line looking for ways that you can improve every sentence, whether it's grammar or your writing style. The final stage is proofreading. When the first two stages are complete, that's when you read through your novel in its entirety, looking for typos and other small errors that you missed. My own personal editing stages will have bits and pieces of all three of those types of edits, depending on which stage we're in. I like to break up my process into five stages. First, I edit for myself. Second, I edit for beta readers. Editing for someone else's eyes is a whole different animal. Third, I will edit based on my beta reader's feedback. Fourth, I will edit for my editor. Finally, number five, I will edit based on my editor's notes and proofread. So that's the broad, big picture overview of how I edit in my five stages. But it's a lot more intensive than that. Are you guys ready for this? Am I ready for this? Just so you guys know, it does look overwhelming to me too. I'm in the very beginning of this process myself for the novel Pearl's Number, the second book in the number series. And yeah, it's scary. I think it's really important to just take it one stage at a time. But also remember that if you get overwhelmed, this is just my process. Take what works for you. Don't worry about the rest. Okay, so let's start with number one, editing for myself. This is definitely the most intensive part of the whole process and also the most scary because obviously it's at its worst right now. It can only get better. This stage does not begin until I have a full first draft completely written. It can be a bad first draft and it usually is but completely written. Once I do, I actually begin my editing process by taking a break. It sounds counterintuitive, I know, but I think it's vital to step away from the process. Two to four weeks is usually a good amount. The reason behind this is that it's very easy to forget what did and did not make it onto the page. The world of your story is up here and it makes perfect sense to you, but what actually got on the page and what's making sense to your reader? The way that you can figure this out is by stepping back and coming to it with fresh eyes. This is also why once I finish my break, I aim to begin my editing with a fast read through. We'll print out the entire first draft. I'll try to shrink it down so it's not a billion pages. And I don't wanna use a computer for this stage because I want to make notes in the margins. There are some authors that I really respect out there who use highlighters and codes and they've got a great system that works for them. But for me, all of that is really distracting. All that I need is a red pen. I did use a black pen for a while and then I realized that if you don't look really closely, it kind of blends in. So I recommend a bright color, bright color pen. My main goal on this first fast read through is how much can I delete? Where is the fluff? I cross out absolutely anything that doesn't need to be there and I try to be ruthless. I will also make notes to myself as I go, such as circling a word that I want to change later or writing more detail here, fact check this, write this better. I don't think it's really that important what your code is so long as you know that when you come back to it later, you'll still remember what you were talking about. Since the goal is to go fast, I do not let myself do the deep edits in the moment. If a word comes to you, replace it, absolutely. If you're feeling inspired and you know this little extra line that you wanna write, put it in there. But otherwise, keep going. Just remember the purpose of the fast read is to really help cement in your brain which parts of the world living and existing up in your head actually made it onto the page. And of course, deleting as much as possible. During the fast read, I will also use a notebook to take extensive notes on five different subjects. I use tabs because this is where my OCD kicks in, but you don't have to. The blue stands for my characters. I will give each character their own page with their name and every single describing detail about them. This yellow section is for my chapter summaries. So I will make sure to give 
a good couple of sections for every single chapter to kind of generally say what is this about. This red tab section that comes after that is where I write down smaller edits that I think, okay, I don't have enough room to write this in the margin of my document, so I'll write um, C notes or something like that. And then I'll write the page number and the note here, such as um, make sure that you show instead of tell how he feels helpless on page 52. As you can see, when I complete them, I scribble them out, so then that way I know that they're done. Very back, however, I will also do the bigger edits. So these are the developmental edits that I think I need a whole page for this, um, such as you need to add a full extra chapter here and what that chapter should have. Last but not least is this green tab, and these are my world building notes. So for example, um, what places are called, what they wear, uh, where they can go, what they can do, the rules of the world, and they all go in here. So as you could already see from the ones that were scribbled out, they help me keep track of which changes that I've made. But then also if you forget what a character looks like or how tall they are or what age you said they were, you don't have to dig through 400 pages of manuscript to figure it out. You can just look and find their name, open it up, see what you wrote about them, or if it's a world building question, open it up to that section and check out what you said about your world. Following the fast read through, I have three steps. First, you take the printed document and you set it next to your computer. You go page by page and delete, delete, delete. Anything that you crossed out on the page gets deleted in the Word document or Scrivener. When I finished my first draft of Evelyn's number, I had a little over 120,000 words. By the time I finished this first step in editing, I had deleted a little over 40,000 words. The next thing I do is pull out that notebook and go through the big edits first, cross them off as I go, and then go through the smaller edits and then cross them off one by one until it's completely done. Last but not least, I take the chapter summaries as well as the character summaries and the world summaries and I create a Word document for each individual section. The reason I try to get them in Word documents is because they're nowhere near done. You're gonna add to them and delete from them and you might as well get them in more readable format that's easy to play around with. Once I get all these scribbles into the computer, I also want to update my poster board outline. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I have a video all about how I initially brainstorm and outline my novel using a poster board and sticky notes. I'll make sure to leave a link for that below, but after that first draft is written, there's going to be a lot more details that weren't included in that first outline. Not to mention you probably just sort of outlined it in a general idea of acts, like act one, act two, act three, and now you have it divided into chapters. Your story structure might have even changed completely. For all my outlines, I like to use a cheap poster board from Walmart that's just a dollar and sticky notes. I usually just flip around my original poster board and use the back. Now this comes into play again because you're going to take your chapter summaries and try to squish them onto individual sticky notes. Summarize each chapter as briefly as you can on each individual post-it note. Put them in order across the board. This bird's eye view is going to show you things like which chapters are too full and need to be split into two or more, which chapters are too thin, maybe if you have more than one point of view character, who is getting to speak more and who needs more time and more chapters. I will put this poster board in front of me throughout the rest of my editing process and use it frequently for that bird's eye view. Not only does this outline continue to cement in your brain what you did and did not get on the page, therefore cementing in your brain what the reader knows about your story, but also this bird's eye view is going to help you puzzle it out and organize and create a better structure and outline to your story. Okay, we finished the fast read through portion, but I am definitely still editing for myself. Now that I have the poster board set up, it's time to get extremely organizational. It's time to start crafting better chapters. I take a look at every single chapter to see what it needs. But some people think the first draft is the full story that you've figured it out, but you actually might want to add some chapters or even remove some. This is also where you look at which chapters could possibly be moved to create a better dramatic effect. And finally, once all your puzzling is done and you've rearranged, sorted, split, you name it, my favorite thing to do is check each chapter for a cliffhanger. You'll notice that if each chapter ends with a cliffhanger or something tense or exciting, 
it makes the reader want to keep going. The logic behind this is so simple, but so awesome. Most people try to wait until the end of a chapter to put the book down. However, if you put a cliffhanger at the end of the chapter, they are not going to be able to put that book down. They're going to keep flipping those pages. They're going to keep reading. That's your goal is for your reader to not put your book down and to keep reading it front to back. A really good example of this is the first book in the Hunger Games series. I highly encourage you to go check it out. Other things I will look for during this organizing stage are that my very first chapter has an inciting incident, that I'm not starting the story too soon or too late, that I have subplots forming, that the middle of the story makes sense, that there are no tangents, that the ending isn't rushed or drawn out. All of this is done on the big picture scale using that poster board before I ever dive into the story itself. Okay, you're probably thinking that we're done with the first stage of editing for ourselves by now. Nope. Now that you've masterminded the ways to change your story using the poster board, it's time to actually dive in and make those changes. This last step of editing for yourself is simply the rewriting and tightening up stage. Rewriting is pretty straightforward. You take a look at what needs to change and you fix it as needed, adding or deleting as you go. Tightening up means making the story more smooth and seamless from start to finish. I highly recommend setting a time frame for yourself and breaking it up into more feasible sections. For example, if you have 30 chapters, Say, set a goal for yourself to rewrite and tighten up one chapter a day for 30 days. Breaking it down into manageable steps will help you not to get overwhelmed. We've finally reached the last step in my editing for myself stage, but if I felt like my novel was still pretty rough, I would actually start this entire stage over from the very beginning, taking a break, fast read, all of it. Phew, okay, it's time to move on. Step two, editing for your beta readers. It's time for beta readers when you've done all the above for yourself and now you're starting to feel like you'd be okay with someone else reading your story. It's not perfect yet, but it doesn't suck either. <laughs> now up until this point you've been editing with yourself in mind, but now we're switching our perspective to editing with your reader in mind. Because of that mindset you're probably going to change wording. You may want to add chapter titles, you might want to flesh out different parts of your story. You'll likely want to build your world even more, and you might even chop parts that you realize are just there because you had fun writing them. Your goal in this stage is not necessarily to be absolutely perfect, but you are aiming to give your beta readers the most exciting, interesting, clear, well-written story that you possibly can. All right, we're at stage number three, editing after your beta readers. Once the beta readers give you their feedback, you're going to have to sift through a lot of information that contradicts itself and figure out what you should and should not change in your story. You will find that they caught a lot of developmental issues despite all the work you did before, and you will want to implement all of those changes as much as you can. Depending on how you did your beta process, you may want to take a break here. If you gave your beta readers all your chapters at once, you've probably already taken a break and you're good to go. But if you're like me and you give a few chapters a week, you're probably feeling a little burnt out and you need to step back and take a break from your story. I did a short video in the past on how to give and receive feedback, which might be valuable for you. If you want to check that out, I'll leave the link for that below. But also leave a comment if you'd be interested in a more in-depth video on my beta reader process, because I do have a very in-depth process. <laughs> but to sum up this section, you're compiling all of the information from your beta readers, finding the plot holes and issues that they pointed out to you, and fixing them. I like to put each individual problem on a sticky note of a different color and slap it on my outline so that I can stare at the outline in front of me as I edit, taking off each sticky note as it's finished until I have a clean outline again. It's a very encouraging feeling. Again, that's just my process. Do whatever works for you. Whew, all right, here we go. Step four. This is editing for your editor. If you didn't take a break after your beta readers, I highly recommend taking it now. You as the author will always know more about your story than the readers, so if you take a break and let yourself forget a little bit about your story and then come back to it with fresh eyes, you will be able to see clearly what your reader knows versus what you know. Once you feel like you have fresh eyes, you're going to do exactly what you did in the beginning and print off your novel for another fast read through. So again, you're crossing off anything you want to delete, circling anything you want to change, adding notes in the margins as needed, and you can use a notebook 
to add more detailed notes on the side if you need to. Just like in the beginning, I aim to do the fast read in about three to seven days, and I aim to do it as fast as possible so that it's seamless in my mind. Seeing it on the paper instead of on the computer helps you to almost see it more like a reader, which in turn will help you to catch things you didn't notice before. Once the fast read is complete, I do the same process as in the beginning. I start with the printed document and go through it page by page, transferring my changes and notes into the Word document, making them as needed. And finally, I use any changes I wrote down in my notebook to make those edits and cross them off as I go. However, unlike the beginning, my goal at this point is perfection. The idea here is that the less garbage the editor has to sift through, the more they will be able to focus on making your story the very best that it can be. Okay, quick side note, I do not count the editor as one of my five stages since you are not the one completing it, but they are extremely, extremely vital to your editing process. Do not skip this step. Please, please do not skip it. If you want more information on how to choose an editor or why you should have one, please leave a comment below. You will want to have started requesting an editor prior to the stage because they tend to be busy. But once you send your novel off to an editor, you'll typically have a break from one to two months while they work on it. I would highly suggest that unless you're doing something with formatting, don't touch your story during this time. If you're making changes and then you receive the manuscript with more changes, you're going to get very confused. Instead, just take a much needed break from your story. Not a break altogether. You can write something else or market or plan your next book, you name it. But once you get the manuscript back, you're going to want fresh eyes once more for your final proofreading stage. Okay guys, we're almost there. My final editing stage, number five, is to complete your editor's notes and proofread. When you get your manuscript back from your editor, you're going to get a lot of notes. I would recommend reading through the notes just to get an idea of everything big picture and then step back for a day or two. You might not necessarily agree with all their changes, but after thinking it over for a day or two, you might find that you think, okay, yeah, I think they're right. An editor might offer to send you a copy with the changes already made. And while that's great, like I said, you might not agree with the change or you might even find that they kind of misunderstood what you were saying. And instead of making the change that they recommend, you can actually make a different change where you clarify your original intentions. And then you finally hit the last step, which is proofreading. I can hear some of you on the other end of the screen saying, why should I have to proofread? If my editor just proofread it, why should I? The truth is your editor is still human. They make mistakes just like you and I. I like to enroll my friends and family at this stage because I found that everybody catches different things. For example, I had uh, four friends and family proofread my story with me. Between the five of us, we found 15 to 20 different weird typos or grammatical things. We didn't even catch all the same things. At this point as authors, let's be honest, we are basically blind when it comes to a typo in our manuscript. Our eyes have read over that bad boy so many times, we don't even see it anymore. For me, a trick to get around that is to actually create the final formatted version of my novel and order a copy from CreateSpace so that I can get a physical book in my hands. Proofreading the actual book itself is not only helpful for any printing issues that you might come across, but you will also find that it lifts a tiny bit of that blindness. Whew, you guys, you made it to the end. <laughs> okay, so to review, I edit for myself, I edit for my beta readers, I edit using beta reader feedback, I edit for my editor, and I edit and proofread after my editor. Okay, I've got a bonus tip for all my self-published authors out there. Make sure to give yourself a lot of space between when you plan to finish editing and when you plan to publish. This is something I really wish that I had done. My publishing schedule was very tight. I finished proofreading only a few weeks before my publishing date and it was very, very stressful. <laughs> it's doable if you push yourself really hard but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. Currently, since I've learned from my mistakes, I now try to give myself about two months between that very final proofread and my publishing date. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can have more writing videos in the future. I post videos every other Thursday and I would love to hear from you on other topics that you might find helpful. Just leave a comment for me below. Okay, I have a big announcement for you guys. As you probably know, my novel, Eveline's Number, was released on December 5th of 2017, and I now have the option on my website 
to do signed copies of my novel. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll leave a link below for my website where you can find the signed copy option. And I will also leave a link to Amazon for a regular copy. If you're curious about my story, don't forget that you can read the first two chapters for free on my website. So make sure to check out that link below. Every single one of you who has sent me a picture of your book arriving, I have saved all of those pictures because they make me so happy. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much it means to me. Thank you guys for watching and we will talk again very soon. Bye.